For today's video, we got some more Fortnite, and in this one, we're actually going to be doing a couple of things. We're going to get some gameplay with the new Snow Stalker Jonesy Hero. We're also going to be getting some gameplay of the new Vacuum Tube Rifle, and I'm also going to be sharing with you all some tips in regards to the Retrieve the Data mission. Now, the way that I got them was by completing one of the Survive the Holidays quests. You'll be given the option to choose either between him and Fragment Flurry Jess, and I ended up choosing him. And doing it that way, you're going to get the epic version of him but I did upgrade him to Legendary by using Legendary Flux. And that's one of the reasons it took me so long to get some gameplay of him because I was trying to get a Legendary version of him from the Llamas, but I was unable to do so. But you should also be able to get him from the Llamas as well. And yeah, as you can see here, we have him up to level 40. And his three main abilities are Frag Grenade, War Cry, and Shockwave. He does have a tactical squad bonus called Rucksack, which is gonna increase the max grenade ammo by two. And when it comes to his other perks, he has advanced tactics, debilitating shots, and explosive rounds, which I believe is one of the new perks. Every time you kill 10 enemies with a ranged weapon, it's going to deal damage in a one tile radius. And that count's going to reset after 15 seconds without a kill. So we'll be sure to test that one out in the gameplay. He also has pull the pin, which is going to reduce the cost of frag grenade by 30. And he also has grenade generation, which every time you get 30 kills with a ranged weapon, it's going to grant one frag grenade. And that count also resets if you go 15 seconds without a kill. He also has mighty roar as well as make it rain. And he also has shock and all, which is going to allow you to apply slow to damage targets. So you'll be able to use that shock and all to take advantage of those slow and snared perks on your weapons. And he also has Cluster Bomb, which I believe is another new perk. And the Cluster Bomb is going to make your frag grenade release six cluster explosions around the impact site that will each do 20% of the original damage. And at the very bottom, it says specializes in fighting crowds of enemies with explosive shells and grenades that regenerate more quickly in combat. So yeah, we'll try to test out the explosive rounds. We'll also try to generate a grenade with that grenade generation perk. And we'll also check out that Cluster Bomb as well. And yeah, that sums up all of the perks and bonuses that came with Snowstalker Jonesy. As for our loadout, we're going to have the Urban Assault Headhunter in our support slot because that's going to increase headshot damage multiplier. And in our tactical slot, we're going to have Plasma Specialist Isa, which is going to help your frag grenades afflict targets. So if you have affliction perks on your weapon, this will be a good hero to use in your tactical slot. And like I said earlier, the weapon we're going to be using is the Vacuum Tube Rifle. One thing you may have noticed is that we don't really have a good roll on this rifle. We got an increase in magazine size times two, increase in damage, crit damage, and if we get five headshots in a row, it's going to increase our ranged weapon damage by 30% for 10 seconds. So that headshot perk is one of the reasons why we put Urban Assault in our support slot. But like I said, it doesn't have the best rolls, so if you get a tube rifle that has better perks, you'll definitely be able to do more damage. Anyways, let me know which weapon you would like to see next, either this lightning pistol, which we got a couple of days ago, or the vacuum tube sword. Let me know which of these two you would like to see next. And the mission we're gonna be doing is this level 70 retrieve the data. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! I guess you suck all right so the mission we're going to be doing is this level 70 retrieve the data and retrieve the data is probably one of the harder missions to solo because it lasts so long and there's a bunch of mist monsters that'll spawn throughout the defense find the landing site build defenses and keep the balloon safe until the data has been transferred the landing site is somewhere in this zone you search on foot and I'll search from above so yeah, the first tip I wanted to point out in regards to retrieve the data is that as soon as you spawn in, you want to look up in the air because you should be able to see the balloon and that way you'll be able to locate the landing site before a ray. Now the next tip I want to quickly go over is how you can tell exactly where the balloon's going to land because as you can see here, there's a total of four tiles in this grid or landing area and the balloon's only going to land in one of these tiles. So a good way to tell where the balloon is going to land exactly is to walk up to the grid and look up. If the balloon is directly in between the two numbers on the timer, that means it's going to be in this row. So the balloon's going to be in this row. If we try it right here, 
as you can see it's not directly in between the two numbers so it's not going to be in this row and basically you do the same thing on the other side as well walk up to one of the rows look up as you can see the balloon is directly between the two numbers that means it's going to be in this row and so the balloon's going to be landing in this tile and the reason i wanted to point that out is because it can save you resources you don't really have to build around the entire grid you just need to build around this one tile but we're going to go ahead and build around the whole thing because we're playing solo and we need as many layers as we can get but yeah that's how you can tell where the balloon's going to land exactly another thing i wanted to point out is that as soon as the timer reaches eight minutes you can shoot down the balloon and start the mission right away so if you're done building and you're ready to go uh, go ahead and shoot it down and it'll start the mission and again that happens at the eight minute mark let's go ahead and test out our shockwave first uh, there's a 30 second cooldown for that let's go ahead and test our grenades and for those who don't know there's actually two clusters i'm gonna go ahead and show you there's the first cluster let's go ahead and keep this one in this area and here's the second cluster so there's two different clusters of explosives for your grenades and the cooldown for those are 25 seconds, I believe. You get a total of three of them. And I also wanted to show off the explosive round perk, which is whenever you get 10 kills with a ranged weapon, it's going to do damage in a one tile radius, basically giving you an explosive round. So we're going to go ahead and test it out on this encampment over here and see what that explosive round looks like. I think it has like a, a blue explosion. We'll see here in a second. You can't go 15 seconds without getting a kill or it'll reset. There it is. That was the explosion right there. Uh, we'll try to test it out again. But yeah, as you see right there, uh, the vacuum tube rifle also stuns enemies. Uh, I think it's going to be within the next couple of kills if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, group up. There it is. So yeah, that's the explosive rounds. Again, every time you get 10 kills without going 15 seconds without getting a kill, and it also has to be with the ranged weapon, it's gonna give you an explosive round. Let's see if we can do one more. Maybe we can do one more. There it is. So yeah, let me know what you think about the explosive rounds. Uh, let's see here. The cooldown for War Cry is one and a half minutes. You can tell if the War Cry is active by looking at the arrows around your body. And yep, it lasted a total of 10 seconds. How about... Oh! Oh shit, I was not ready. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, guys, I wasn't ready. Here we go. Uh, last thing I wanted to point out in regards to retrieve the data is that as soon as it lands, you can go ahead and build a box around it, which is what we're going to go ahead and do. And we're going to go ahead and put a ceiling around all this as well because we don't want them jumping down in there. Uh, but yeah, here we go. No one is impressed by you. And this may get crazy, fellas. I was not done building, but we sort of ran out of time. We also added a bunch of ceiling traps up there to help us out a little bit. Hopefully we get some water enemies. Oh, we do have water enemies perfect because nature deals more damage against water enemies so that's awesome uh, it's like somebody sh shooting me from underneath i don't know how that blaster was shooting me oh was this it uh, we don't have enough materials to actually rebuild or repair either which is not good but yeah that's why retrieve the data is one of the harder missions when it comes to Solomon don't have a whole lot of time to build or get resources and it also lasts was it seven or eight minutes I, I didn't see how long it lasts uh, but we need to try to go for headshots here so we can take advantage of that headshot damage perk. We'll also start spamming our grenades once we see more 
us show up. It's like one's behind here. Let's go ahead and take him out. There we go. All right, so we got some more to show. Let's go ahead and spam our grenades. There's the first cluster, and it should be a second one. And there's the second cluster. I'm not sure if this is the best grenade in the game, because Urban Assault's grenade is also pretty decent. It lasts a little bit longer. And I think it, uh, Urban Assault's grenade is better for crowd control. But it does seem like Snow Stalker's grenades is good when it comes to a bunch of enemies in a small space. You can take out a bunch. Of, plus, I like that it has two clusters. Just in case some enemies missed out on the first cluster. Alright, so I think we got smashers. We may need to put up... Uh, this is just a regular smasher. Let's use our shockwave. And I think we may also use... Uh-oh. Exploders. We may also use our war cry here, too. Let's go use that real quick. There we go. Alright, so the exploders are making a mess right now. That's not good. Um, we're going to go ahead and put down another floor launcher. Alright, let's see if we can take these guys out. We only got four and a half. Is this another? Oh, we got another one. Alright, we're going to go ahead and put up our... Oh my goodness. They're destroying everything right now. We're going to go ahead and put up our slow field to help us out a little bit. Oh, we don't have... Oh my goodness. We don't have any resources. We don't have any metal. Oh my goodness. Alright, so we lost one. That's alright though. That's alright. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, we're losing everything right now. I don't know if we're going to survive this, fellas. Yeah, go over there. Okay, we almost got one of the smashers down. Honestly, I don't care if we lose files. I just want to survive. Like, that's my main goal here. Just try to survive. I think after we kill these smashers, though, uh, no more smashers will show up, I don't think. Uh, or at least I'm hoping. So I know that was a little messy, fellas. My bad, but... It's not really that easy doing it solo. We're going to try to uh, replace some of these traps. Let's go ahead and call this in. Oh man, that was really messy. My fault, fellas. Uh, let me know what y'all think. Oh, we couldn't get it. Let me know what y'all think about the vacuum tube rifle. Do you like it? As you can tell, it's a single burst or a semi-automatic, I should say. You have to keep pressing the trigger to actually shoot. That's one of the things I don't really like about it. Not a huge fan of having to keep pressing the trigger over and over. Uh, we're going to go ahead and save our war cry in case those smashes show up again. Because that, that was just terrible, man. That was terrible. Let's go ahead and get another floor launcher. Let's double check everything, make sure everything's good. Uh oh. Uh oh, no, 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 don't die. We made it so far. Uh, we're gonna have to see where these blasters are. I think that's the one that was shooting me right there. Uh, only a minute and 40 seconds left. This is my first time actually soloing, retrieve the data. Like I said, I know it was messy, but we sort of ran out of resources, and we probably should have saved our war cry for when the two elemental smashers showed up, but we were still able to survive it, and we only have a minute and a half left. We're going to try to use our, our skills for the remainder of this gameplay. There we go. I didn't really do a good job of getting headshots. 
Not this time. Okay. Oh, we got a tiger. Hold on. Oh, he's already dead. Okay, we're good. Uh oh. The exploders didn't help either. Let's try to get rid of them real quick. Okay, so it looks like the shockwave actually sets off the propane tanks, which I did not know. Oh, oh no. Come on, Travis, help. Thank you. Let's go ahead and get our health back real quick. We only have 30 seconds left. We can do this. Uh, so we, we lost two of the files. Uh, which obviously isn't good, but fortunately, we don't need to get all of the files to complete the mission. Oh no. Let's go ahead and use our war car real quick for the last five seconds. Oh no, I need to reload. Oh man, that was close. That was really close. Good job. The data Whew. collected will help us locate survivors and weak points in the storm. All right, well, I know that wasn't necessarily the best gameplay, but just wanted to show some of the things that Snowstalker Jonesy can do. Also wanted to show off the vacuum tube rifle. Let me know what you think about both of those in the comments below. I hope you found the video useful, and thanks for watching.